Thank you for sharing this first. <laughs> this is the first time I have done something like this. Yes, I am doing a series three Mondays in a row that is actually all about us. <laughs> Every year I do something just for men. As, um, today's Black Man and His Money, Afro Economics Presents. And the brothers do a fabulous job. And one thing they never ask me is, do you do this for women? Because, so I post on there and I'm like, hey, ladies, make sure you participate tonight. And what? One of us says, oh, do you do this for men? I was like, that is funny. But it is this different, like just our, our mindset is everything. You know, and we have to start taking advantage of everything that can empower us, that can empower us as women, because even, even, and I was saying, as some of you are just getting in, that there was someone who, tech, who did a, a comment on a promotion video that I did. They said, oh, do you do this for men? And, you know, I consider every Wednesday night really for men, but we do have in June, I'm going to do it again. Today's Black Man and His Money, and it is phenomenal. And I want to encourage all of you ladies to participate. I'm doing that live, though. These are a series of webinars that are just focusing on issues that I think can empower us as women, things that we need to think about, things that we need to address. I do think that we do have some unique challenges. I feel that men have some challenges that they deal with, and I feel that women have some challenges that, that we deal with. I think that we are, are unique, just as I believe that Afroeconomics has its purpose because even as Black men and women, we have some unique challenges and unique experiences that we live and grow through. That's, that's the point of Afroeconomics. And yes, it is necessary you know, that, that, we, that we need to have the time to focus on us as Black people, and we need to focus on our experiences financially as Black people, and we need to focus on our financial experiences as Black women. So I thank God for Afroeconomics and I thank God for your support. You know, the members, you make it all possible, definitely. So let's look at some key things. They're just, you know, some key things that come to mind that I want to make sure that we talk about. I want, um, if any of you, please raise your hand. If you will share and come on camera with me, I would love it. <laughs> yes, I would. I would completely love it if you would so just like raise your hand. Those of you that are on the webinar, please raise your hand. Let me know if you're willing to participate with me because it will help and you will help so many people. You basically have a responsibility <laughs> to come on and ask any questions to help me expand on this. If you don't and someone does not live up to their full potential, I want you to know that it is your fault. Yes, I want you to feel completely responsible for your sister's success as I feel responsible for yours. So please, Betty, let me know. Real, I see you out there. Let me know. Raise your hand if you are willing. But if you seriously, though, if you have a question, you know, any of you, you, Miss Davis, if you have a question, let me know. I know that you might be at work. And you're like, J.D., I can't play with you. I'm at work. But I'm glad that you are participating. So let's look at these, some key points. The first point that I want to make, these are things or challenges, challenges that only we face as women, you know, and specifically as Black women. I would say that the number one is, is that we have this um, overwhelming majority uh, of us have a lot of financial responsibility for our family. Many of us, many of you that are participating are the primary or only money maker for your household because everybody else is your kids, you know? So <laughs> you have this additional um, challenge 
of making sure that your family's financial well-being happens based on your, your planning, your planning ability, your confidence. I think that we really need to realize how important our, so let's say as our first point, that we need to realize as Black women how important financial empowerment is for us, especially when you're the only breadwinner in the family. And then also, if you are, you know, married and you, you know that your Black man is exposed to um, cultural discrimination, um, has, has these additional challenges and stresses that we have to be an even stronger bond. You have to be a positive, encouraging, uh, a financial force that we build each other up, not bring each other down. As, so your, finance, your commitment to your, fi your family's financial success will be so much more appreciated you know, that uh, um, if you are participating in these type of discussions, that you realize that, hey, I am, I have these key things. As a Black woman, uh, statistics and research shows that I'm very likely to make less money than anybody else on the totem pole, really. You know, that you're more likely to, to grow old and be poor. And how do I avoid this? It's by getting the financial empowerment and the information and addressing the things that are slowing me down from reaching my financial goals. And I want you to know that I believe that we shouldn't focus on that far off place of retirement, but we should focus and must focus on financial empowerment, independence, the second principle of Afroeconomics, self-reliance today, today. That we shouldn't think, oh, well, I'll get back to my financial goals, you know, uh, later on, or I I'll, 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 I'll just keep, just be saving for my uh, retirement. And um, no, we need to be conscious right now on this day, how important it is for me to be financially independent so when you're thinking about doing something completely unnecessary, like buying a luxury item that's really not needed, and I, you'll realize that that's pulling away from my current financial independence, that the more debt that I get in, the more I'm depending on that job for my existence. And the farther I get from my dream of being debt-free, right? the farther and farther you're getting from what you ultimately want to accomplish. And then let's, let's look at a, 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 a second point I want to, to also realize. So my first point is just that we need to accept the fact that we are Black women and proudly accept everything that goes with it and walk into that and realize that as a queen, you have a responsibility to be financially independent and financially wise and financially prudent. A second point is that as women, unfortunately, we tend to spend less time in the workforce because of the time that we take out for our children. You know, even if you are working full time and then you have a child and then you start um, working part time or you have a child and you take two months off, that's two months, that's eight weeks out of your career. Meanwhile, something else is going on. Someone else is progressing in the workplace, in your, in your job. Like I'm, as a business owner, that's a luxury I did not have. And I had my child on a Friday, I be kept where I was working through labor, still talking to my office, and then was back to work on Monday. I don't even think that I would have been able to even take more time off, mostly because I love what I do and I have been blessed to be able to do both. And thankfully I was able to do that, but many people do not do that. And I, my child was able to stay with me at work and I was able to hire a nanny. So my child was with me the first three years of her life at work with me. Where some people, those are the only time that you have with your child 
or those seven weeks or eight weeks that you take off because you have to go to a separate workplace. So I understand that. So we got to look at everybody's situation uniquely. But we have to understand that because of our commitment and God chose us to be mothers, then that's what has happened, that we do carry the greater load of caring for our children. So in many cases, we cannot maximize our career opportunities because of the changes that we have made, the decisions that we have made. You know, I hate to say the word sacrifice, but, but we have made many of financial sacrifice to keep, to take, make sure that our children got the attention that they need. And that balance between the money and the attention is a double, it's quite a challenge for us as single parents. A third point is that there is income equal, inequality and we need to accept that. I talked about that last week about the wage gap that and it's much bigger for black women than the wage gap between white men and white women. And then black women, it's even farther. So we have to realize that it is real. The national gender gap is 17.1 cent with the average male taking home, the, um, the, the wage gap is 17.1% with the average male taking home 15, 32 a week compared to 1270 for females. And there's a whole bunch of females that don't take home $1,200 a week, um, unfortunately. But even on that level, so the, you know, there's definitely re research says <coughs> that we are less likely to ask our boss for a pay raise. I guess that's why I always had to be the boss, right? Look, so when I want to pay raise, I just work harder. Yeah, but it's, it, research says that women, um, men are much more comfortable talking about money and having conversations about getting that pay raise and, and, and selling themselves and selling the points and selling the benefits of giving them a raise to their employer than we are. And I really want to do more discussion about helping us have more confidence in that area because you know that's what I do for a living talk to people about money so I really don't think about that that most women aren't comfortable talking about this but use me you know may God allow me to use me use you use me to help you become even more confident about the discussion of getting that raise that you deserve right and then a fourth point is that according to research, again, the average divorce hits women harder. It's that women are more likely to, to, to like be really harmed financially from a divorce. And we need to realize the impact of that. And a lot of times you have to, unfortunately, think about that while you're married, that what am I doing to sabotaging my financial independence. And what if this marriage doesn't work out? So hard to say that, but we gotta keep it real. That, you know, so if you decide, you realize that if you decide and you give up your career and then you're depending completely on his income, you will have to sue him for alimony in order to maintain your style of living. And that's very difficult and expensive to do. So we have to really um, build a relationship around us mutually sacrificing and growing and, and raising the children together. So that, um, and, and that takes so much communication, but it also will keep the marriage healthy. I think that if one person isn't growing and the other person is, is growing or one person is only in the house and the other person is, is uh, you know, out and, and I'm always coming up with new ideas and experiencing new things and meeting new people, it probably could increase the chances of a divorce. So you, know, you need to be growing together and hopefully building together or pray real hard for someone that really appreciates the priceless treasure of a spouse that stays home and takes great care of their children.
because it is a treasure. And so um, just be mindful that divorce hits women harder. So make sure that you're securing yourself financially, even if you are, um, are blessed with the opportunity for a wonderful, healthy marriage, make sure that you, you know, realize that the worst case scenario, it, could, it typically hits us harder. And then, you know, a final point about things that I feel that we as women need to realize. Now, this isn't as true as, as for black women as it's for white women, that, you know, white women live dramatically longer than their men. Black women were under so much stress, you know, uh, um, we're getting illnesses very much sooner. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know, I haven't seen the research between black, de black female death and black male death. And, you know, we probably do live a little longer, but not as longer as a white female does than a white male, you know. So, but because we um, typically do live longer, but we're making less money, then that means we're more likely to grow old and be poor because you have to be much more mindful of your money because it's easier for you to outlive your money. If you, you know, because of your long, healthy life, we have to make sure that we have long, healthy money. Yes, Ms. Tripp says, women sacrifice a lot. I'm reading a note here. She says, we sacrifice a lot. I'm right now making dinner, checking homework, washing clothes, and listening to you. Amen. Many times it's hard. Um, hard health choice, a hard heart choice for moms to be and feel present for their kids and making themselves available to travel and be available at all hours for your job. So true. And, you know, I, I'm the, and I think that, you know, because of that, of my, you know, commitment to being a mother and then going through a divorce so early in uh, my daughter's life, my husband, you know, left the marriage when she was four weeks old, that it did, um, it has been really challenging to get that uh, um, balance because I really want my child to have the best of me and I want my business to have the best of me. So where is the rest, you know, for someone that's not her parent? So it would have been much easier to be married in having, um, if it were the father, you know, of my child. But, you know, those are, you know, the, uh, uh, the challenges that we have as professional women. I was, um, I was speaking uh, with a woman today and several women, and I was like, look, I saw a brother uh, shared an article on um, Facebook, and, I, and I, I, that would have been great to have, but it was talking about how some men cannot handle a woman who makes more than them. So you'll see, unfortunately, a lot of women that do very well, but they're alone because, you know, men might not be as interested, you know, in us if they see you as making more money, some men, you know, but, you know, you have that, you know, extra, you know, challenge, but also that extra requirement for us to be financially independent. You no, know? so we, I mean, I have known women who because of the money that they make, their husbands and boyfriends or whoever will not pay anything because they know they make so much more money. And then there are some women, because of that, they don't feel that they should pay their child support because they know the child will be okay because you make good money. But I always say that the custodial parent is at a... Um, they're more limited in their ability to make income because when you have custody of the children, you cannot, as Ms. Tripp was saying, you cannot work overtime all the time. You can't travel all the time. You know, so you're giving up. She said, oh, that's the truth. Thank you. The, you know, you're giving, you're giving up a lot. And I hope that, you know, brothers will realize that, that the woman, even though she's doing well, She's sacrificing a whole lot as the custodial parent where you're, if you don't have custody, 
you should not allow that child support to be a problem for you. You should be working two, three jobs because she can only work one job and that's while they're at school if they're school age kids. So there are definitely, um, so that means that every bit, like we have to be so emotionally healthy as women because every bit of your money, single or not, married or not, we have to be emotionally healthy. I started to call this retail therapy, but I was like, that's too, you know, that's, that's just too, you know, <laughs> amen to you, Ms. Davis. It's that, that, that was just too, you know, much like too girly, girly, but we got to get away from that whole retail therapy, you know, crap. There's no therapy there. There is absolutely no therapy in being broke. There's no therapy in buying something you don't need. There's no therapy. I mean, if you want to have something therapeutic, have peace of mind, have debt freedom, have a career, have healthy kids, have balanced choices and realize that in order to have financial independence, it's going to take sacrifice. And you definitely can't try to keep up with anybody else. You're going to have to have your own financial plan that we, I definitely can help you put that together on and work on what you're working on. Because if you live long enough, you'll see that you're not doing as bad as you thought. You know, but we have to be focused on making good choices throughout our life, realizing that sometimes it's not going to be fun, but accepting the fact if you don't have the money, you don't have the money. You cannot do it. We have to make the right choice, indeed. So those are the key points I've just um, summarized. Uh, uh, my first was just that we, not, we need to be comfortable with the point that we are um, black women and we have unique challenges and we do face um, discrimination and that we have a requirement for us to build one another up and make a positive impact on this planet. You have a requirement to build up your brothers and your sisters and let's be of help to each other. And you have a requirement to separate yourself from negative situations that are pulling you down because there's no space in your financial future for victimization. You have to allow yourself to be a victim first in order for us to be one. So you want to be on top of your game. You want to be financially independent. You got to be surrounded by people going the same direction. Know that you're going to make some sacrifices. You may have already. We can make up that time that we had, that we lost by focusing on our priority at that time, our children. And I, what I do is the more independent my daughter gets, the more independent my thoughts get. And I slowly but surely get back to working on the same level as I was before. And then also, you know, realize that you have to go out there and get the money that you deserve. There is no space in our life for in income inequality. If you think that someone else, or not even, you, you don't even have to think, you can already assume that the, per the man working with you, doing the same job, is making more money than you. So you need to realize, what changes do I need to do in order to make, make sure I made that same money, right? Realize that you want to div avoid divorce by any means possible, which means, what? A, first of all, we got to make sure we marry the right person in the first place. We got to take marriage more seriously. We have to realize, especially if you're a single parent, the impact of your decisions on your children. And then know that your health is very important. And that if the longer you can stay healthy, the longer you will be able to work. And then that if you're going to be healthy and you're going to live long, let's make sure our money is long as well. Well, that's my thoughts for today. <laughs> Next week, I think I want to talk about women in business, but don't look, hey, don't lock me in. You'll know, you'll know next week this time. But I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm just thinking about you know, I have some stuff that I can share as being a woman in business, being an entrepreneur that probably doesn't need to leave this planet with me. So Lord, let me take and give you 
all that I got to give. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. And I like to talk about things that are unique, things that, um, and, and, and give you information that, that is priceless. And, um, you know, and, and it, it, it encourage, you know, it, it requires that I be vulnerable, but know that I appreciate you. And I truly believe that I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something every day. When I share a piece of me, it empowers someone else. You know, I accept that as true. <laughs> you all be good to yourselves. I'll talk to you next week. Don't forget Wednesday night is Afroeconomics Live. And I will have this recorded and on YouTube as soon as possible. I love you all. Have a wonderful one. Uh, uh, I appreciate you. <laughs> well, I'm glad. <laughs> Thank you so much. Y'all are a blessing. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks, everybody. And we got some brothers up in here. I see you, artists. I see you, Mr. Martin. <laughs> I see y'all. Take care. And I appreciate y'all. Yes, I do. Thank you. You are always welcome. So don't forget next Monday. <laughs>